Hello everybody, be welcome. I'm Vitor Pordeus from the People's University for Art and Science and uh, we are here to uh, present uh, our uh, proposal for the Art and Healing Workshop coordinated by Dr. Jasmine Gusder from the Division of Social and Transcultural Psychiatry of McGill University and uh, also I've been uh, uh, dialoguing with Professor Sudesh Mantilak from Sri Lanka, who is also part of the course, and we are doing this session together today. I bring some memories from immunology, biology of cognition, theater, and transcultural psychiatry, and uh, we are the Dionysus Theater Clinic in Rio de Janeiro from the Popular University for Art and Science. The first uh, a Brazilian scientist I need to mention is Professor Nelson Monteiro Vaz, who is an immunologist. He's 86 years old now, and he pioneered a new interpretation of immunology uh, related and uh, connected and referenced in the biology of Professor Humberto Maturana, who is in the center of the picture with Nelson Vaz beside him. Jorge Podosis, who is a, a, the substitute of Maturana in Chile, Miriam Graciano, Gustavo Ramos Archimedes, Gustavo Ruiz, and myself in the right inferior corner of the picture with 27 years old. Nelson Weiss pioneered uh, Maturana's visions in biology and it was uh, uh, a new uh, paradigm uh, was founded when he started to uh, in, uh, look into the immune system with a vision of uh, biology uh, as, as uh, proposed by Umberto Maturana. I published a paper in, uh, uh, recently about paradigmatic shift in immunology, implications for medicine, pathophysiology and public health policies, where I tell very uh, clearly uh, this story of Nelson Weiss and Maturana and how that impacts in uh, more general medicine and more public policies uh, in, of public health. And Umberto Maturana is this Chilean neurobiologist who has just passed away and he developed uh, the autopoiesis theory, the new theory about evolution called the origin of the species by means of natural drift and he has made this huge contribution that is being each time more widely recognized from biology to psychiatry to anthropology to human sciences to social sciences and Maturana is considered to be a new father of, of a new biology of ecological and epigenetic biology. This idea of autopoiesis, autoconnections, epigenetics, continuous development non-linear development, non-competitive behavior, and connected, self-connected behavior, multi-connected behavior, ecological behavior. And uh, the central idea of his work is this idea of molecular autopoiesis that we know from uh, molecular cycles, from different uh, uh, schools, but especially from bio biochemistry. And this is connected to the origin of life and how we are all interconnected in the molecular and uh, ecological and epigenetic way. And this, we believe, is a new paradigm and a new uh, vision for interpreting biology and evolutionary theory and medicine and public policies come along, come after it. Another key uh, artist this time, it's an actor and director who is still alive with 86 years old too, is Amir Haddad. He is a theater director and actor here in Brazil who started a whole movement of public art and street theater. And I, ca I came from his school. I have been working with him for a long time. We worked together in the streets, in the psychiatric hospital. And uh, he gave me the method for theater. And he gave me the understanding that every hum human being is an actor and the whole world is a stage. And this is Amir Haddad. He's a, one of the key uh, living actors of Brazil. And, and, and we, I'm, I'm fortunate to have come from his school of theater. And he saved my mind 
from the medical burnout. I had a severe medical burnout in my medical school due to having to assist the cardiac arrest of my own grandfather in the hospital school. And then I, I went really crazy, got really depressed, and, and it was with theater and Ami Haddad's theater that I came out of this disease. And also, Dr. Nise da Silveira, that a uh, little after I went to work in her uh, hospital, and I found out this incredible physician and psychiatrist, woman physician and psychiatrist, who developed a whole approach involving arts and painting and sculpture and theater and music and dance, starting to work in the 40s in Brazil during a very uh, sinister time where they used lobotomies and electroshocks. And, and in the, she started in the work, her work in the hospital where I worked too in, in 1946. And, and she started working in a very uh, hostile environment. And she founded the largest museum for art and, art and madness, which is the, the Museum of Images of the Unconscious. And uh, today it counts with up to 400,000 artworks that uh, were produced mainly by severely affected uh, mental diseases people. <laughs> And Dr. Nisi also pioneered zoo therapy, also pioneered theater, also pioneered painting, sculpture, and, and uh, wrote a whole uh, work, uh, six books that uh, cover psychopathology, cover philosophy, cover phenomenology. And she is really a polymath, and she is really a very gifted person. And she developed a whole career dedicated to the public health system. She worked with Carl Jung personally one year and a half in Switzerland and pioneered Jungian psychology in South America. And she also has developed uh, the House of the Palms, a Casa das Palmeiras, which is the first community clinic uh, of transcultural psychiatry in Brazil. It was, she started it in 1956 and she discovered the most gifted artists amongst the severe schizophrenic uh, people that were incarcerated for 40, 30, 20 years, like these people in the picture, which is Emilio de Barros, in the left, Adelina Gomez, and in the right, in the, in the fund, uh, uh, Fernando Diniz. We uh, consider Dr. Nise da Silveira to be the icon and, and this, the, the perfect mirror to mental health in Brazil and to, per, to transcultural psychiatry in Brazil because she's really a Leonardo da Vinci. She re, really did an incredible synthesis in art and psychiatry and that's why we are doing psychiatry up to now. One of her students that deserves absolute mention is Professor Lula Vanderlei. Uh, he developed the whole approach of contemporary art and relational objects along with the artist Lija Clark, and he has been working with severe uh, mental illness, schizophrenics and chronic psychotics for 40 years now. And he is a very, uh, a great physician and a great artist, a great poet, a great, uh, he's a painter, he's a drawer. He develops all kinds of uh, interventions. He alters, here he appears as, uh, as Charlie Chaplin, uh, because he likes to mingle with this idea of simulation of of art and, and simulation and art and, and fake and deep fake and, and he performs along with the patients here he's in the middle of a performance with Severino dos, das, Severino dos Santos and, and Monica they are playing together here is Lula Vanderlei in the, in the Madness Hotel uh, performing doing a performance with us uh, this uh, in 2012, and he developed this very important uh, uh, therapeutic method called the structuration of the self, coming from a proposition of Lija Clark, who is one of the greatest uh, contemporary artists, and he applies that into chronic psychotic and acute psychotic people, and he develops uh, an open meaning system where people uh, complete the meaning of relational objects through uh, performances that he uh, 
uh, lays the person in a, in a bed and, and applies the relational objects to her body. It's an absolutely original and revolutionary work for mental health promotion, totally uh, cheap and suitable because the, the relational objects are uh, plastics and uh, small objects with, without uh, uh, full meaning, where incomplete meaning in this, in the interaction between the therapist and the patient, the meaning goes emerging, fueled by the subjectivity of the patient. It's a very sophisticated method. When we worked in the, in the I also in the, the psychiatric hospital, during this movement of working in the Brazilian public health, I met these living references like Lula Vanderlei and, and, and also the other people that I was mentioning, Maturana and Nelson Vaz. And I met these three uh, constructivist educators, Vera Dantas is a physician, Ray Lima is a poet, and Junior Santo is an actor and theater director. And they work together for 50 years now doing theater and public health and community medicine and public policies for culture, for health. And we uh, managed, we were synchronized by unconscious forces to work together in the, in the Ministry of Health of Brazil. And then I managed to bring them into the psychiatric hospital where Nise uh, worked and I was a manager at the time. And we started the Madness Hotel together. And this has developed an incredible uh, synchronization and meeting of incredible people like Dr. Vera Dantas here in the middle, along with Dr. Jason Gus, the Debbie and Chambers, Lula Vanderlei and Vitor Nina, that we were together in Sao Paulo, as I want to show very soon. This is Ray Lima, this great poet and Seno poet, and, and uh, beside him, Junior Santos. <coughs> <coughs> and here in this picture, we can see Junior and Ray Lima talking in the Madness Hotel. We worked and developed this idea of Seno poetry, which is cultural action for freedom, like Fal Paulo Freire, the idea of decolonization of the mind, like in Fanon, the de decolonizing psychiatry by Fred Hickling. I, I managed a, a department in the psychiatric hospital that we named it the Madness Hotel from 2009 until the coup d'etat in 2016, where I was, fi I was fired in secret by this, the, the, the health office of Rio, a very conspiratory plot to dismantle our, our work. That was a very uh, exuberant work with theater and performance and collective performance and pub, uh, occupation of public spaces, occupation of theaters, of playhouses and universities. And, and we uh, developed a very interesting uh, public policy involving, involving a theater training and the development of incredible actors like Reginaldo Terra, who became an actor uh, even after more than 50 years in, uh, into the psychiatric system, hospitalized into the psychiatric system. He was hospitalized when he was 11 years old and he was diagnosed with hebephrenic schizophrenia. And he spent 58 years inside the psychiatric system, the public psychiatric system of Rio. And we met inside the asylum and he became a key actor and a leader in our Madness Hotel. Here he was controlling the entrance and he would help us with the man management and it was incredible. He is still working with me after 15 years. And, and that, that's one of our prizes. This is a Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine is my work with Gen uh, Reginaldo Terra. And here, this is myself animating a pageant. This must be 2013 or uh, 2014, yes. And this picture shows the climate of the Madness Hotel, where everybody was playing, where everybody was singing, where everybody was finding a way to dialogue through theater and performance and collective work and we would work in the nights, we would work in the weekends. We occupied with a lot of uh, uh, actions and pageants and workshops and parties and poetry festivals. And it was a huge success. 
it was su so successful that the envy of the uh, envious psychopaths from the uh, the government, the municipal government in the public health office, managed to destroy it, and now they have a completely deactivated space and uh, bad management as a rule in Brazil, in the third world, and, and the, the psychopathology of colonization, that's what we are fighting against here. This is Edu Viola, a great master who is a composer and helped us to plasmate and to create the, the rituals of the Madness Hotel. We would work in the public squares with a lot of collective work and all kinds of people, all kinds of artists. And we would uh, have sessions in the streets and workshops in the streets with very important artists like Ney Mato Grosso, who is seated in the center of the picture, and Amir Haddad, who I spoke about, Ray Lima, who I spoke about. And we did all this in collective work with assemblies and a permanent workshops and permanent regular activity and we managed to work for uh, seven years and that's a record in Brazilian public policy because they fight all the time and the, and the projects, the public policy projects usually take like one year, two years and they, they are knocked out and then they have new projects, a lot of money is spent, it's very ineffective, the, the, the medicine, the Brazilian medicine is totally colonial so we managed to break that through action and cultural action and public policy of, of for mental health. This is Milton Freire, who was a patient of Nise. He is a, a ex a schizophrenic. He became a poet and a writer, and he was one of the key collaborators of the Madness Hotel. And we use it to do festivals and congresses for art and psychiatry, for uh, theater and psychiatry more specifically. In 2014 and 2015, we played Hamlet with this uh, play called Madness Yet, There is Method in It, where Reginaldo Terra played the ghost of King Hamlet. I played Hamlet, and all patients and all people played all the characters. We would do it without specializing roles, and everybody was allowed to improvise and participate in dialogue. And that's precisely what Shakespeare wants when he's instructing the actors to serve to nature as a mirror, to dialogue, né? to be the, 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 the image of your own time, the image of your own community, the image of your, your own family and group. This had, has had an incredible international repercussion. It was published in BBC in 2015. And our uh, main actor keeps working after 15 years. Now he's 74 years old without the leg and with, with this 58 years of uh, incarceration in the psychiatric system, he's still playing, and he, he, I'll show a picture of him last Friday when he was playing the black psychiatrist Giuliano Moreira in the new play, Who is Afraid of the Young Freud. After the development of the Madness Hotel, I searched for international cooperation, and I ended up in a division of social transcultural psychiatry of McGill, and I arrived in, in 2015 uh, looking for uh, collaboration and looking for dialogue and construction. And I have to uh, thank Professor Jason Gusder for being a great uh, supervisor and a great physician and a great psychiatrist, a great philosopher and artist. So Jason is also a polymath. It's a multi-gifted multi uh, scientist, art scientist. And uh, I was very happy to bring her into Brazil uh, last year in Sao Paulo, uh, where she was the key uh, guest in an incredible, Im immense uh, f uh, f 500 people uh, seminar that we did in, in Sao Paulo in the uh, commerce organization of SESC, Sao Paulo, and, and we could also enjoy the, the, the art show of Nise da Silveira, who is, I also have curated this exhibition, and I, we were involved in, in producing events about art and, and, and psychiatry and art and, and mental health promotion. And Jasmine was uh, a key uh, contribution in Brazilian psychiatry this, at this moment because she brought the work of Fred Hicklin, she brought the idea 
of psychopathology of colonization, the, the psychopathology of racism, and all these are contributions of her lifetime work when she arrives in McGill when she's 19 years old and she's still working and still teaching and still doing research and art and mental health promotion uh, against all probabilities or in, in our current medical and scientific system that is so racist and so uh, unfair and so unequal. And, and this is what we are doing right now, the, the, the summer program, the, the social cultural psychiatry. I consider myself to be a student of this school, and for me, it's very, I'm very honored to play together with my masters and to teach together with my masters, like Jasmine. This is when we taught together in Venice. We went to Venice in 2019. We were, we were invited. And this is the arrival of, of Jasmine Gusder and Debian Chambers in Brazil that happened just March past. And we are introducing this debate in Brazil right now, introducing the work of Jasmine in Brazil right now, introducing the work of Fred Hicklin in Brazil right now. And we understand that Fred has produced a considerable and meaningful lifetime work involving culture and theater and cultural therapy and psychohistoriography from the hospital to the community to the school to the to the clinical psychiatry and we have been together in Jamaica just before Fred's passing that happened in 2020 and he already is four years uh, uh, gone and Fred has been this prophetic figure from uh, Jamaica who developed a public mental health policy based in culture, transcultural psychiatry, from the asylum to the community, to the school. It, that's the, 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 his whole life uh, contribution. And this has striking parallels with our work, with our situation in Brazil, the situation of colonialism and post-slavery society. So we pay this ho big homage to, to Fred Hickling, who was a decolonizer of psychiatry in our uh, school in, in McGill, in Jamaica, in, in Brazil, in England. Fred is, is, is really totally uh, recognized as a revolutionary uh, uh, scientist, art scientist of our time, who produced an immense clinical and community work and community experiences in his lifetime work during uh, his resistance in, in Jamaica, and, and this is a scientific proof that we can do it and we can occupy uh, public policies and public positions of, of mental health promotion, of public health, and this is our possibility. I have been working here in Rio in the last six years uh, in my own office, in my own system. I developed a system that integrates uh, medical consultations office with uh, home medical care and, and, and residential drama therapy and residential uh, family therapy and, 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 and a lot of collective work with the families, with the groups, with theater. We developed a front in sports psychiatry because I'm very connected to swimming and, and, and CrossFit and here in Rio I see a lot of people connected to, to the sports and the, the sports neurosis that has been a surprise and a finding here. And we also do actors workshops and we do regularly in the last six years. Uh, we did 11 plays and we are doing right now the last new play that we have been working the last year, which is Who is Afraid of the Young Freud? And that's the way to connect the whole activity. We also have an online course on epigenetic psychopathology that is returning on August. And we also have meeting for uh, clinical supervision with the people who is working. And we have the, um, this is my office. This is my office in Leblon, in Rio de Janeiro. And he, see, it's here where I see the patients. It's here, where, and then I have another room for seeing families. And this is uh, the cultural actions that we perform regularly in the streets, in the streets of Rio, in the beaches, in, in around Brazil. We play the characters, the villains, we do uh, pageants. I was invited to work in Denmark in 2019 in the Hamlet Castle to, 
talk about my experience with Shakespeare and psychiatry in the Hamlet uh, uh, royal family uh, family uh, castle in, in Elsinore in Denmark, and we keep playing. This is the the the, the sign for of our last play, the poster, our poster of our last play, and and uh, who is afraid of the young Freud that had just has just had his its premiere and here we have a, a scene from last friday where uh, reginaldo terra is playing juliano moreira who is the pioneer black psychiatrist in brazil who also introduced uh, freudian uh, psychotherapy in our country and in, in, in south america and he was totally erased and he did the psychiatric reformation because he was a manager of the public system in the beginning of the 20th century, but he was totally erased and the psychiatric reformation retroceded. And we are right now struggling with uh, uh, retro retrocesses in the, the mental health policy and the, the return of asylums and just all this kind of very uh, historical battles in, in medicine. So this is our last performance, the Who's Afraid of the Young Freud. We are doing every Saturday at 7 p.m. In, uh, in, in, in a public square where I had been working in the last 12 years since the Madness Hotel, playing in the streets with people, with beggars, with street sellers, with all kinds of people, in dialoguing. And the key is dialoguing. And if you dialogue into improvisation and playing and singing and dancing, you can accommodate any person and this can create an experience of totality, an experience of uh, encountering, an experience of alterity, of, of seeing the other. And, and, and as we say in the play, dialogue restores sanity, which is uh, Hippocrates' quotation. And also that because of the, of the similar heals the similar, the alike heals the alike. So this is a, a very old statement from Madison, and, and this is the main vision. So this is a panorama of our people, and Jasmine is there, and you know, Jacques Arpin. I saw that she spoke about him in the entry, and, and I put here Jean-Martin Charcot, who was a pioneer in the arts and psychiatry, Freud, Jung. All we have common principles. And we have, if you, we want to do science, we have to identify which are those common principles that are practical and can be reproduced in practice. And then we can play it and reproduce it and do it uh, in clinical practice, showing how creativity is important, how dialoguing is important, how community is important, and how the joining of memories is important. Thank you very much. And I'll be happy to answer questions.